Hello, and welcome to the Rambleverse. 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 Okay. <laughs> I am Zach the Fist Cake. We are back with another episode of Rambleverse, the podcast where I ramble about video games and video game news because I did it for so long, I am broken now, and I have to talk about it. Otherwise, I kind of just overshare and spill video game news with all my friends and family. So it's just... <laughs> so it's nice to kind of like just uh, talk about it into a void where, you know, where I, it doesn't hurt anybody. <laughs> where people uh, sign up to listen to this so they don't have to, you know, they're not forced to listen to me talk about how Epic Games is a bastard man. Um <laughs> Uh, today's episode might be a little bit shorter. One, because I don't have as much stuff to talk about. And two, I've already recorded like the first 20 minutes of this before. And then I realized I was recording on the wrong mic. And I am now doing this all over again. <laughs> so it's fine. It's fine. This will be practice. And, you know, that was a practice round before. Now that I'm, you know, got some. Uh, yeah, I'm doing great. <laughs> Even with even with talking about it before, I am you know still stumbling around, but that's okay. First, we're going to talk about the games I've played so far this week, which really I've only pl- I mean I've played stuff for the channel and whatnot, but really in my off time I've been playing a lot of the new Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven with the its two point update and the Phantom Liberty DLC. If you know nothing about Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. Here's the quick rundown. It was released four years ago, three years ago, something like that. And it was not ready to be released because it was uh, very buggy, very poorly optimized. It was uh, a disaster. It was so bad. Sony had to remove it from its uh, store page, which I don't think has ever happened to a triple A game. And it's very interesting because, like, they have hentai games in the in the Sony PlayStation Store. So, <laughs> I wonder, you know, I wonder where the 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 line is there. But so it it was released poorly. It was very very bad. Uh, the develop not the developers like the people. I I, I can't remember specifically who was mentioned who was talking about this, but somebody from. Uh, CD project get pro project I think project red right if I remember correctly um well I I know who I mean I know somebody from there said I just can't remember if that's how you say the name of the company somebody from over there was trying to throw the the QA people under the bus They're like oh man we didn't know it was this bad we were just we we're just so flabbergasted that it's so bad and then there was like problems with the the stockholders it was terrible and it caused so many problems. But after a while, they released some updates to the game. They started making it better and better. And so after like about a year, I think, because I got it like on release as a gift from somebody. I can't remember. I think my wife got it. She was like, hey, I just thought like she just was. It was uh, it was funny because like she just randomly wanted like, you know, be nice to me, which you do to people that you love for some reason. Uh <laughs> And she was like, hey, got you this in another game. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, all right. No, that's fine. Thank you. <laughs> I'll just uh, I'll just uh, wait for this game to be better. And I did. Uh, like I said, it was about a year or so later that I played it. And it was okay. It was still a little buggy. Um, but it was, it, was, it was fine enough that like with some mods, I managed to make it a pretty fun experience for me. Which really, I just changed the UI colors, and I think there's like a bug fix mod patch or something that I've downloaded. And I played through it. I beat the game, and it was fun. It was a nice little experience. Well, as of like last month or sometime earlier this month, they released the 2.0 update. And it kind of completely changes how the game plays, which is which is very interesting. I always find it interesting that these... uh which we'll kind of talk about this later, how like games can kind of like replace games, but at least this time it's the same game, but it is like a different way to play it. 
Uh, so, I, you know, I, I don't remember all the exact details of the differences between before 2.0 and after 2.0. But from what I remember, what I have experienced is that is that uh, before you uh, your armor. So before your armor was based only on your clothes, like you could add additional armor, I believe, through cyberware. But a lot of it came from your clothes. So you would always have like these, you know, mishmash of like <laughs> of clothes you were wearing that, uh, you know, adjusted your stats and whatnot. And so it, it was always a, a a disaster. Like your character always looked like a disaster. I think they released something later on with one of the updates where it was kind of like a transmog where you can like equip a wardrobe. But like you would still have like all like your base clothes would. Basically, it would just change your clothes to clothes that you would want to actually actually wear that actually you thought looked cool while keeping the stats of your base clothes. The difference here is that some items, like some clothes, have like special effects and whatnot, like special status stuff. But for the most part, you get all your armor and stuff now from cyberware uh, through like a some kind of cyberware system. I can't remember which one exactly. So that so that's a, that's an update. So now you can like wear whatever clothes you want. You can still do the wardrobe function, which is just handy because you can like switch between like seven saved outfits. And be like, all right, I want to be this guy, or I want to wear this. Um, another change is actually the cyberware system itself. Now you have like a cap of like of like how much cyberware you can put on your body, depending on your level. I can't remember which attribute it is based off of, but basically you have like a, a little level bar or level, not a level bar, but like basically a bar that levels up with a certain attribute. So I think it's either intelligence or technical ability, either one of those. I can't remember exactly. So like you, you can only like equip cyberware up to that level. And at a certain point, one of the skill trees, you can like unlock an ability that allows you to go past your, your cap by like 50 points or something like that at some cost of like to your health or something like, or something. But, um, so yeah, so like it's very interesting because it poses a unique problem for me. Well, not even a problem really. It's just like, Oh, well I have to play more of the game, uh, where I have like $200,000 from doing side gigs, selling weapons and doing all that stuff. And I'm just kind of holding on to it while I wait for my, cyberware limit to go up which i think is interesting i think it's pretty cool uh it's probably to help like balance out like the fact that you know you could find like somebody with fancy uh, cyberware like one of the uh vendors that sell cyberware you can like go to one of them like all right give me the best shit so i can like mow everybody down and you know I i think that's what i did before is like i would like in the previous playthrough i just literally went through a lot of the side gigs sold all the weapons I didn't want to use, made a lot of money. And then I would just like buy as much shit as I could and be like, all right, now to play the way I want to, <laughs> which I think before I used gorilla arms as well, I, I like to punch stuff. I, I don't know if you know this about me, but I like to punch things and I really was enjoying, uh, punching people in the previous playthrough. And I'm back on my bullshit in this playthrough with my gorilla arms which if you don't know anything about cyberpunk, it's not like literal gorilla arms. Your arms just like are stronger. And when you like exert yourself, like when you do like heavy punches or if like you try to open doors, like little uh, parts of your arm, see if I can show this, like your arms will like expand out and like, it's really cool. Uh, (laughs) I'm more interested to see like how people use like uh other item or other uh, cyberware stuff. But so we talked about the armor of the cyberware. Uh, oh yeah. Your health and grenades. Like before you would actually just buy stocks of your health items and your grenades, like, you know, buy a hundred health sprays, buy a hundred grenades. Uh, this time around, you can just like upgrade the quality of your health items and your uh, grenades, but you get charges of them. So like on default, you get like two charges of your health item and two charges of your grenade. And they replenish after a certain amount of a time, which I think that's also a good idea because I think before you could just spam healing items, <laughs> like you could have like a hundred health sprays and 
if you're in like a tricky situation, you're just in the middle of the combat shooting people and like huffing this like health inhaler. <laughs> it's a, I think it's a good fix. Uh, and there's like also skills related to that where you can like upgrade how many items, how many health items you can use, uh, how many grenades you can use, etc. Um, what else? What else? Oh, there's more uh, vehicle combat where like kind of before, like you would do these uh, missions where either you're in the passenger seat shooting at people or you're just kind of driving around. Well, out in the real world, like out in the in the game world, you can actually like shoot and drive now. Um, I don't know if you can use melee weapons in cars. I know you can use melee weapons on a bike. Because uh, I used, like, I had my bat out. I was like, oh, cool. I can use my bat and just bash people while I'm driving by. For me, I think it's mostly my computer, but my game doesn't run smooth enough for me to, like, drive by people and hit them with a bat. So, <laughs> I don't know. That's ever applicable to me. But um I'm trying to think what else about the 2.0 update. But I think that's about it. As to the Phantom Liberty part itself... uh at this point, the DLC is not even a week old, so I'm not going to get super far into it. But I'll mention like the one cool aspect about the new DLC is that you can start a new game. You can go through the main story as normal, or you can start a new game at the point where the DLC would happen, which is a little bit past after the, you know, the Arasaka heist in the, in the game, which I love because I played through that intro a few times and the intro is fun and interesting the first time you play through it but it does not have any staying power the second time or the third time afterwards (laughs) or the fourth time uh (laughs) and really i i would play through them a few times just to see like what you know the nomad has to say about stuff with the corpo person has to say about stuff or the street kid version, blah, blah, blah. And it was fine. Like, like it was really, like I said, fun and interesting. The first time after, after the first time I'm just mashing through the skip, but I'm trying to get to the part of the game where it opens up because it really doesn't open up until after you get done with that. They kind of like, you can explore the world a little bit, but you can't really do ripper doc stuff. You can't like buy upgrades. You can't do, um, side gigs, etc. It's just kind of like, it's just a very long intro and I I don't really care for it after the first time. So when the DLC came out and they're like, Hey, you can start as a, with a little pre-made character, which you still adjust like the way your character looks, but they have like a uh, certain upgrades and stuff, depending on what kind of uh, background you select. And you can always change it too. It's not like you're locked into a, a certain character. So that, that was a godsend. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> I was like, Oh, thank God. I don't have to play the intro again. Jackie is cool. He's a cool character, but, um, you know, I just don't, I'm not so obsessed with him that I had to play through the intro again and again and again. (laughs) So anyways, uh, Phantom Liberty, you're kind of out there in the world doing your thing and you get a call from somebody called Songbird and she's like, Hey, I need your help. I need you to go to Dogtown. I'll meet you there. And Dogtown I don't remember if they talked about Dogtown in the base game before, but uh, apparently everybody knows about Dogtown now. Like, everybody's like, oh, you gotta go to Dogtown. Ooh. The city within the city. It's like its own little closed-off section of uh, of Night City. And uh, without getting in, into it too much, you, uh, you meet up with Songbird. She's like, hey, you help me out. I'll help with that relic in your head. And also here. And she kind of gives you like a... You unlock like a sixth skill tree in your character that that is uh, directly affects your relic, which affects like your combat stuff. So it's it's, it's kind of fun to see like oh that's a, that's a pretty uh, sweet separate upgrade system because you use relic points for that. You don't use like your regular skill or attribute points. So it's it's like it's like its own thing over there. It's pretty cool. Um, oh yeah. So you meet up with a songbird. She's like, hey, I need you to help out the president and it kind of goes from there. It starts off as like escape from New York where, you know, you're trying to save the president, trying to help her out, get her out of town. And then it turns more into a, a spy thriller after, after a certain point 
where you meet up with Idris Elba. And he's like, hey, let's do spy stuff. And you're like, all right, Idris Elba. Elber. All right, Idris. Let's uh, Idris. Let's uh, go do spy stuff. And they kind of like balanced it out by like, all right, we did all the spy stuff we can do for now. Uh, wait a couple days and I'll, I'll call you and we can do some more spy stuff. And you're like, okay, Idris, whatever. Which is cool because you can, uh, like Dogtown has a lot of, uh, a lot of side gigs, additional characters to talk to. It's kind of like own home, a little city. And it's, it's really cool to check out. And then it's, uh, just kind of fun to play more of the game. Um, I'll talk more about it after I've beaten it, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see, but I think it's looking pretty good. I think we're looking at a pretty decent DLC, uh, good story, fun characters. Uh, I don't know. It's just fun to beat the shit out of people. <laughs> like I, I don't use the weapons at all. I think in my previous playthrough, I did like use at least like a pistol or something, but like 99% of the time I've used my my gorilla arms just to beat the shit out of people. I'll use like my, you know, net runner skills to like maybe blind a few people. I'll throw a flash grenade. And then while everybody's like blind and confused, I just beat the shit out of them with my hands. Like bap, 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 bap. And everybody's dead. They're like, Oh God, what the hell happened? Oh my God. I was kind of op- o- overpowered for a little bit because I had this one item or not item. I had like this one cyberware thing where whenever I got hurt, I would like release a shockwave, like electrical damage that would just like murder anybody that was, was near me. So I'm like in the middle of punching people and like people were getting cut in half by my electrical shockwave. I'm like, Oh, whoops. Okay. Uh, I guess you're dead. All right. Sorry. <laughs> but I have changed that for just more armor. And also there's some missions where uh, non-lethality is handy and you get more rewards for being non-lethal. So that, you know, that's why I've made the change. But yeah, I think that will do it for Cyberpunk this time. Stay tuned for more. (laughs) And uh, what here? Oh yeah, I'll talk a little bit of Shadows of Doubt. Um, I've been playing Shadows of Doubt for the channel. And super recently... What was it? Yeah, like a few days ago, they released the Cheats and Liars update, which comes with like a bunch of more fixes for the game, patches, bug fixes, yada, yada. But also now that it's unlocked uh, new side mission types. Actually, I'm sorry. Let me start from the beginning. Uh, Because I don't think I talked about Shadows of Doubt before on, on the podcast. But Shadows of Doubt is a procedurally generated detective immersive sim. So you can start a game and you're basically like a like a private investigator slash like freelance detective and murders will happen in the city and you have to solve them. Otherwise, they're just going to keep happen happening. They're going to keep happening. Uh, so um and you can solve crimes multiple ways, uh, you know, look for fingerprints, uh, check out camera feeds, talk to people that were near the, the body or talk to people that know the peop- the person that was killed. It, it, it's, it's really interesting. It's like a very cool, like, it's how you would solve cases, I think. Well, I'm not a, a detective, but like if you were a private investigator that was trying to solve cases, you would, this is like how you would. Like you could like literally approach it in any way possible. Uh, people, people think of different ways to solve crimes all the time. It's a lot of, it's a lot of fun. It's really cool. Um, <coughs> I can't remember. If it's early access. I think it's technically early access. Let me see. Do, 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 do. I mean, if it's not early access, they are updating a bunch of stuff into it. Um, because it like, it just, yeah, like the care, the, the developer wants to add more stuff to it. And with it being a procedurally generated detective game. Oh, I forgot to mention, every time you start a new game, it generates a whole new city for you with every character in the, in the city, which there are hundreds, depending on the the size of the city, uh, hundreds of people that have their own, like each one has their own unique schedule, their own job, their own thing, um, likes, dislikes, trust levels, etc. And it's just really cool because like, it feels like a living, breathing city and you're just some, some PI doing some dirty work, trying to solve another case. So yeah, it's, it's a very fun game. I highly recommend it. If you are into, uh, being a detective, you know, being a Columbo. <laughs> All right. So shout out to doubt. 
So with the update, they've added new side cases, which is like basically while you're waiting for murders to happen after you solve a murder and you're just kind of like waiting a day or two to solve murders. Uh, you can take on side cases to get like uh, upgrades for your character and money. And really, that's the two things. Those are the two rewards. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, there's a bunch of like side gigs you can do. And they've added more side gigs with the cheats and liars update, um, such as like catching somebody cheating on their partner or uh, tailing somebody after like they've done like a a briefcase exchange, you know, trying to catch some shady business. So you follow the person, see who they're delivering the briefcase to, and then you follow that person Uh, catching cheating partners. You basically like you figure out who you're who the person's cheating with, where they live, who they are. And you can like, I think there's like another side thing where like, if you throw food in their face, you get like more money or something. But, um, so that's really fun. That's really interesting. And my playthrough, since I've already generated a city, I don't think I have this in my world, but they've added a, uh, like a grand hotel, like an actual, like just gigantic hotel that's in the middle of the city or something. And which is cool because they'd only, they only have, um, apartments so far. And like apartment buildings and businesses. So having like a hotel is kind of cool. Adds a little more flavor to the city. And then also now you can give items to people before you can only like talk to them. Like, Hey, do you know this guy? Uh, can you provide fingerprints? Can you give me money? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But now you can actually like give people items like soda or whatever. And you can also just accuse them of murder be like, hey, I'm arresting you on murder. And sometimes they'll be like, oh, all right, you got me. But probably more than likely, they'll be like, uh, fuck you, I'm out of here. And try to beat the beat you up. Which, that goes okay sometimes. Like, if you can fight the person. I literally try to... Like, this game is, like, covered in bugs. But that's kind of what happens and is to be expected with a game this complex. So I'm not super upset by you just reload a save. So if you play Shadows of Doubt... Remember to save often, like save whenever you can. If you think like, have I saved in a while? You should save. Just go ahead and save. <laughs> Just like, all right, I should save. Uh, so yeah, that, that's been a lot of fun with a cheats and liars update. Um, what was I saying? I literally had like one instance where I, I was like staking out this, uh, this business, I was waiting for it to close so I could sneak in and uh, check for fingerprints because I found like fingerprints on a crime scene um, that was probably from the killer. And I kind of suspected this person's coworker. So I you know, was going to try to sneak in or whatever, but basically it was just kind of bugged because this one guy was like hanging out like in front of the door even after like the business was closed for hours at this point. So I was like, all right, I'll shut down like the security door so nobody else can see me and I'll just beat the shit out of this guy. I throw one punch and this businessman who works in like uh, some kind of marketing business pulls out like a hunting rifle out of nowhere and starts shooting at me. I'm like, holy shit, what the hell? So (laughs) I'm like, all right, I'm not, (laughs) I'm not dealing with this. I'm just going to uh, bail. And I did. I just restarted the save, but I don't know that I thought it was just funny. Like this marketing man, <laughs> he's just like, Oh, punching me. eh? let me pull out my hunting rifle that I keep in my business suit all the time. I'm like, okay. Um, all right. You win tough guy. I'm out of here. So that is uh shadows of doubt. A lot of fun. Enjoying my time in it. I'm probably going to, con- yeah, I'm going to continue playing on the channel. I think once I get through, Like the ultimate goal of Shadows of Doubt is to get to your social level 10. And once you get your or social credit level 10, and once you get to that level, you can basically retire to this place called the fields, which is supposed to be like a prime, amazing, like a really cool retirement home for people. But I'm suspicious. I I think they probably probably just kill you. I think, I think they probably just kill you. So I don't know. (laughs) But either way, that's the ultimate goal. Get your social credit level 10 so you can retire. Once I do that, I think I'll probably stop playing on the channel um, and wait for it to be updated more. Because it's just like, 
like I said, really the only down part of the game is like all these random bugs and stuff. I, you know, some of the missions aren't very clear. Um, like I did one of those tailing missions before and they're like, all right, somebody in your immediate vicinity with red hair, long red hair, blue eyes, blah, 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 is carrying a briefcase, follow them, uh, and see who they're delivering the briefcase to blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, cool. I look around. I don't see them inside the bar I'm at. So I like run around the block. I don't see them. So I'm like looking for them for like 10, 15 minutes. I'm like, I don't know if they've already done the exchange or if I'm still, if I'm supposed to wait more or what, but yeah, which is kind of weird for like a YouTube channel. It's kind of weird for like a let's play. It's just like, okay, well, I guess I'll bail on this, but if you're just kind of playing on your own, you're, you'll, you'll be just like, oh, okay, I'll just uh, cancel this and start a different mission because this is not working right. <laughs> but yeah, so highly recommend Shadows of Doubt. You should play it. Everybody should play it. Go play Shadows of Doubt. Okay. <clears throat> I have some unfortunate news. Not like, it's not super bad. It's just channel related. It's related to the YouTube channel. I've kind of done some soul searching and... I'm making this a lot bigger than it should be, but I know like people are really excited. I, I know people really enjoy Baldur's Gate three. It's a cool game. It's the hot new RPG, but I've been kind of thinking about it and I think I'm going to, I, well, I'm not going, I don't, I don't think I am. I am going to uh, end the playthrough on the channel, probably because I started this, like, you know, this wild card character, And I keep forgetting to do like the randomization part of it, you know, keep it interesting, keep it cool, different from other let's plays. And also partly it's like one episode a week. And those episodes are about one hour to like an hour, 30 hour, an hour, 30, an hour and 30 minutes long, which I'll look it up real quick. Let's see how long to beat Baldur's Gate three. They say an hour and 50 hours, 50 and a half hours, but that can't be true because (laughs) I have played like a bit more than that. And it's, I'm not very far into the game, but a completionist hour says 138 hours. So that's probably, I would say, Oh, okay. I see. I'm sorry. I'm all over the place. Main story is 50 and a half. I mean, and sides are about 97 hours. So it would be like a hundred episodes and I have a child coming soon and I don't know if I'll be able to maintain, uh, you know, playing this game and all that. But basically long story short, I don't really want to restart a new playthrough of the series because I already restarted once because like, Oh, this wild card thing would be fun. But then I didn't think it through. I didn't think like, Oh, how should I do the randomization thing? Should I, you know, I, I like, at first I'm like, all right, I'll just literally randomly decide for each decision I have to make. And that made record like what well, should have been like an hour long session made it like two hours because I was always on the phone being like, all right, pick a number between one and five. Wait a second. Okay, cool. All right. Here's the numbers to prove I'm not cheating. And I, you know, throw it on the screen. Um, so yeah, I think we're going to, and I think we're going to stop the Baldur's Gate three playthrough. I'm going to play it on my own time. Um, after I get done with uh, cyberpunk. And if I can think of anything interesting or whatever, I might play it again. I think it would be a good streaming game because you can, like with streaming, you you know, you're playing for like at least a few hours if you're doing a a decent stream. Um, So maybe if I ever get into streaming again, I might do that. But for now, I think we're just, we're going to have to say uh, goodbye to Strong the Monk and Wild Card. But I thought as like a... um, consolation prize to people playing or people watching the podcast i will randomly pick the new playthrough um let's see here how many numbers we have all right so out of 365 items all right i have a spreadsheet that has like all the games i want to play on the channel um but let's see here random number 250 all right let's see what's number 250 Number 250 is a Mirror's Edge game. Okay. I'd be down for that. And the, the way I do it is basically, I, I'm not going to like, like, for example, I have Metal Gear Solid up here and it, it's taking up a few spots. But like if I roll and I and it lands on like Metal Gear Solid 5 or whatever, I'm not going to 
just play Metal Gear Solid Five. I'm gonna play the first game in the series and work my way up every time it selects that. Like kind of like with Clock Tower, I think it technically picked like Clock Tower three or two, and I was like, well, I'm gonna start with Clock Tower one because it doesn't really make sense to play Clock Tower two and then one and then three. But <laughs> so yeah, I'll have to remember that. So Mirror's Edge. If you don't know what Mirror's Edge is, it's basically parkour the game. You are you play as a at least in the first one, I think you play as a character named Faith, if I remember right. Maybe I have that wrong. But essentially you're just kinda like parkouring through levels, running around, uh, avoiding people, uh doing like, you know, wall running, sliding, jumping over people. It was a lot of fun. I played it a long time ago. I never played the second one, though, so maybe at some point we'll play that. It's on the list, so I mean, that's technically what the selector selected. But So yeah, say goodbye to Baldur's Gate 3 and say hello to Mirror's Edge, which I need to work on. I might release one more episode of Baldur's Gate 3 because I have recorded it. I like I've recorded like two or three more episodes. I'm like, ah, I think I don't want to play Baldur's Gate 3 on the channel anymore, which sucks because I have so much Baldur's Gate 3 content to release, so... <laughs> so for now, yeah, I think I'll uh we'll, we'll release one more episode and then start melt start Mirror's Edge. But yeah. So that is the channel news. And now we'll start with the video game news. Throwing video game news ticker sounds. Okay, first on the list here, uh, just a fun little quick story here. Uh and it gives me an excuse to talk about Sekiro. Shadows die twice. If you do not know about Sekiro, it is one of the FromSoft's like Souls-like games. It's really interesting because it's nothing like the other Souls games. It's completely different, but I think it's a fun little departure. Like the actual gameplay was just like a lot of fun, but like the item system, like your little arm item stuff was kind of goofy uh, in a way. Like, I don't, know, I don't think I really used my arm, like my arm upgrades a lot, but, but it, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get lost in the sauce here, but the news is, is that it just sold 10 million copies as of like, uh, September 26. So, you know, that's pretty cool. It's, it's a fun, I actually can't remember when Sekiro was, was released. So let's see here. Oh, here we go from, uh, the game's official website. And this is a translation from, uh, Japanese to English, uh, from its release in March 2019 to today, we have received tremendous support from everyone, and we have now surpassed 10 million, 10 million units sold worldwide. We would like to express our sincere gratitude to everyone who played this work. So yeah, that's really cool that it's sold 10 million copies. It, it's, a, it's a good game. Definitely worth playing. I'm trying to think. Sorry, words are hard. Uh, <laughs> and like I said, with all my news stories, with everything, I have like a link to the article in the podcast description, or if you're watching this on YouTube, it'll be in the episode description. Uh, check it out there. But yeah, I, like I said, it's just a really fun game. It's just as obtuse as all the other from soft games. I I have never like discovered anything like, and there's like a lot of obtuseness in Sekiro as well. So if you do play Sekiro, which I think you should, I think it's worth playing. I would find like a spoiler free guide to get like a good ending because. It's not like the bad endings are like super bad. It's just like you hate to have like go through all this trouble, you know, and play all, you know, defeat all these hard bosses to get like a mediocre ending. And I think that's like a, I think that's like a hard thing for uh, game developers to do, especially like from soft. But like, all right, what are, uh, how do we balance fun boss fights and also like a good ending that makes sense? but that also doesn't like completely shit on the character or shit on the person playing the game. Like, like the bad ending shouldn't be like, all right, your character is shot brutally and they, you know, they live an unhappy life. They don't ever, <laughs> they never find happiness or they just die immediately, you know, whatever. So Sekiro sold 10 million copies. Good for you, Sekiro. You did it. All right. Next story. Now this is interesting because this is like a pretty, so the story itself is kind of just a, uh, like one quick little note, but it kind of leaves like a bigger impact than maybe what most people think. I'm not for sure. Um, Hideki Kamiya is leaving Platinum Games. If you don't know Platinum Games, they are the people who make uh, Bayonetta, 
Beautiful Joe, Devil Make. Well, hold on. No, they don't make. I'm sorry, they didn't make Beautiful Joe. Platinum Games made Bayonetta and uh, Near Automata and a few other games. Hideki Kamiya is a uh, you know he created Bayonetta, Devil May Cry, and Beautiful Joe, if I remember correctly. Um, no, it says here. Okay. And the creative me- mind behind Bayonetta, Devil May Cry, and Beautiful Joe, amongst other games, uh, he is leaving Platinum Games, which he says he's going to continue making games. So that's not that's not bad. Like, we're I'm happy to see more <laughs> Hideki Kamiya games, even though Bayonetta 3, I guess, was released to, like, very poor uh, reviews. It was not a very great game from what I've heard. Um, I really have... I've played a little bit of Bayonetta 1 and 2, but I've never beaten them, which I think that's on my list of games to play. So at some point, we will be playing Bayonetta, but for now, I have yet to actually finish them. But anyways, I'm all over the place. Hideki Kamiya is leaving Platinum Games. He's going to be making his own... He's going to continue making games in the future. We don't know how or in what way. Like I, We don't know if he's going to make his own studio or if he's going to do something else, which for me, like... Over the last year or so, Platinum Games have been like kind of pushing um, for a live service game model. Um, they've been doing this for uh, a while. They've been um, kind of like over the last like, hey, we're trying to make uh, you know live service games. We're trying to um, like what was the last one they made? I forget. I don't know. Bas- basically, it's not looking good over in Platinum Games. It's they've kind of been slowly going downhill, and I'm wondering what the next steps are for them. I wonder how they're going to continue this, especially without Kamiya being like one of the, the main brains behind all these cool games. Like, I don't know if they have the rights to Bayonetta now still, or if he has rights to Bayonetta or whatever. I don't know. It's just basically a lot of speculation and a lot of like, all right, let's see what happens with this. Let's see what happens with Platinum games in the future, but that's not looking good. Next story is do, 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 do. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I was talking about earlier how like games are just suddenly replacing other games. Kind of like how Overwatch 2 has replaced Overwatch and nobody liked that. People would rather play Overwatch 1. Everybody hates Overwatch 2. Uh, I don't know what the general opinion about this game is, but Counter-Strike 2 is suddenly released and it's replaced Counter-Strike Go, which was the Counter-Strike game. That's been like the newest Counter-Strike game for like the last few years. It's just out of nowhere. It's just like, all right, Counter-Strike Go is gone. Now it's time for Counter-Strike 2, which is kind of interesting because uh, one, it it seems like another Overwatch 2 scenario. So we'll see how that goes with the fans of the game. Um, I myself, I played a little bit of Counter-Strike and I played a little bit of Valorant, which are kind of the same game, but different, which if you don't know anything about Counter-Strike, it's basically a 5v5, if I remember right, of uh, terrorists versus counter-terrorists, and you win by either killing the entire other team, or if the other team, or if they place a bomb or something. And there's like an also like, it's you can kill the other team, or you can do like an objective thing, and that's how you you win the game. And in between rounds, you can, like, buy weapons and, um, you know, it's a fun little uh, team game, fun little uh, romp. But, um, yeah, Uh, so it's very interesting to see Counter-Strike 2 just suddenly replace Counter-Strike Global Offensive because, one, it's just like, okay, well, what if we wanted to play, (laughs) what if we don't like Counter-Strike 2? What if we want to play Counter-Strike Global Offensive? And two, it has all like on Steam, it'll have all the reviews and stuff from Counter Strike Global Offensive because it's just replacing the same slot. So you kind of kind of wonder like, are they doing that on purpose? Like, are they just like trying to like, all right, we're going to use all the the good press and the good reviews from Counter Strike Global Offensive and be like, all right, uh, Counter Strike Two is good, you know, it says so on the reviews. Look at the reviews. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. It's a very weird thing to do. I don't know why. Well, I guess I know why companies would do this. One, to save money, and two, to be like, all right, just, you know, override the old thing. Force all the new people, force all the old players to play this new game that you've spent a lot of money on. And hopefully, at the very least, you make somewhat of a profit. 
but if the game is bad, you're not going to get you're not going to get very far for very long with that kind of attitude. So yeah, I uh we'll, we'll see how this goes. We'll keep you posted. Um <laughs> like I said, it's just very weird. I don't know why that's a I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. All right, last news article of the day. Boot 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 last news. Um where is it? Aha. Oh yeah. Imagine this. Epic Games is being a piece of shit again. No, sorry. The article says Epic Games <laughs> lays off over 800 employees. Um in this article which is from Game Informer. I need to do I need to be better about that. I need to be better about um mentioning where I get my articles from. But like I said, check the podcast description, check the episode description on YouTube. Um in this Game Informer article by Marcus Stewart, uh Yesterday, on September 28th, Epic Games has announced that it is laying off 16% of its workforce, which means they're laying off over around 830 employees. In a statement posted by Epic President Tim Sweeney, he explains the layoffs as a cost-cutting measure that will include divesting Bandcamp, which are acquired acquired last year, and spinning off, okay, blah, blah, blah. So, do, 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 do. Oh, here we go. For a while now, we've been spending way more money than we earn, investing in the next evolution of Epic and growing Fortnite as a metaverse inspired ecosystem for creators. Sweeney writes in a statement I had long been optimistic that we could power through the, this transition without layoffs, but in retrospect, I see that this was unrealistic. And blah, blah, blah. He goes on and on, like how, why he deserves to lay off 800 people, which I wonder if we can see his net worth. Let's see. Tim Sweeney. Net worth, twenty twenty three. All right. Um. Well, let's see here. As of uh, uh, do 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 do. Okay. So in May twenty twenty two, Tim Sweeney had a net worth of around seven point six billion. Um. Or according to Forbes, he had a net worth of about seven point six billion. However, Bloomberg estimated that his worth is his wealth is actually at nine point six billion. God forbid. Oh, hold on. Sorry. Well, it's just kind of hard to, I guess, get like a, just a straightforward number. Essentially, he has over $5 billion and God forbid that he kind of be like, all right, well, I want to continue making money. I want to continue to have like this very nice lifestyle I have. So what I'll do is I will ruin the lives of over 800 people and um, I will continue to have my parties and my mansions and my yachts. So I don't know if he has mansions or yachts, honestly, but. I feel like as a billionaire, that's kind of like obligatory. Like you have to have a yacht of some sort or a mansion. You have to have at least a mansion. Even if you don't live in the mansion, you have to have a mansion. Uh, but yeah, so instead of, you know, him taking a little pay cut or like, you know, you know, paying people to like work with him for a little bit longer or whatever, he is uh, laying them off. I will say that he's not like they're not being completely like cut off. They're not like, all right, you're laid off. You have absolutely nothing. Um, they are getting, what is it? Six months of base pay and six months of Epic paid healthcare. So they are getting something, but honestly, I think that's probably like a, I'm, I'm not for sure. Armchair lawyer here. I imagine that the only reason why they are getting these six months of base pay and whatever healthcare is that because they are legally obligated to do so, not because they want to do so. So, <laughs> so yeah, uh, very cool. Very happy for uh, Tim Sweeney. He's going to uh, continue hemorrhaging money. Honestly, I feel bad for the people losing their jobs, but this feels like maybe like the first piece of the Jenga tower of Epic game is being like pulled out and not even placed back on top. Just like they're just pulling it out. Uh, so hopefully fingers crossed very soon, the Epic games will be shut down and they can uh, fuck off somewhere. <laughs> I'm not, a, I, I have a little bias of, uh, against Epic games, uh, believe it or not. That is it for all the news. Like I said, this is going to be a shorter one. So, uh, really on the outro here, like I mentioned last week, uh, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns in the YouTube video. Uh, comment down below. Let me know how you feel about uh, Hideki Kamiya, Hideki Kamiya leaving Platinum Games. 
and if you're enjoying uh, Cyberpunk 2077, let me know. Well, actually, if if you're playing Cyberpunk 2077, just let me know how uh, how, how you enjoying the game or not. Like, what do you, what do you think about it? Um, if you're listening to the podcast version, I'll make a new email here in a second. But basically, I'll make a Rambleverse thing. Um, check the podcast description. But long story short, for each for each uh, <laughs> for everything, check the description of uh, the podcast, either in the YouTube video or in the like actual podcast feed description um, news for the channel. Like I said, we're going to slowly transition out of Baldur's gate three and replace it with mirrors edge, a much shorter game, <laughs> more shadows of doubt, more bomb rush, cyber funk. And yeah, I think they'll do it for this week. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> bye bye.